My name is Laurence Albiges. I'm a medical oncologist, head of medical oncology department in Gustave Roussy in France. That's the largest cancer center in Europe. So non clear cell renal cell carcinoma account for about 15 to 20 percent of patients treated with renal cell carcinoma. The challenges with this entity is that it's not one single entity. It's actually different disease that have different prognosis and that for a long time have been treated in the same way we are treated patients with clear cell RCC, the most common form of kidney cancer. However, over the course of the past few years, there has been important changes that are reflected in the guidelines. The first one is that we should not lump all these diseases all together, and we should identify specifically, are we talking about papillary renal cell carcinoma, chromophobe RCC, or translocation RCC, for instance, because treatment actually differs, and we are having more and more data to support that. And so there has been trial testing combination approach, because for a long time we used single agent TKIs, like we did for clear cell RCC. Then we had a randomized phase two, which helped to define cabozantinib versus sunenidib as potentially the most active uh, VGF TKIs for papillary RCC, and that's the PAPMED study. But now for about two years, we've had heard from combination therapy in those patients with rare histologies. And so we've had several trials. The first one was actually cabozantinib plus nivolumab that showed that we can achieve more than 50% response rate. But we also had more data of a single arm phase two study, lenvatinib plus permalizumab, that not only show a high response rate, above 50% in the different histologies except chromophobe RCC, but also showed a long progression-free survival of something around 17 months, where we used to have six months-ish with single agent TKI. So this is very important, and that explains the changes in the guidelines we are seeing. But as I stress, we need more granularity, histology by histology. So we would love to have, you know, specific data for translocation RCC. And one, for, one situation, for instance, that is challenging is chromophobe RCC, because in this situation, single agent immune checkpoint inhibitor doesn't seem to be active. And as of now, it's lenvatinib based regimen, len eve or len pembro, that seems to derive the higher benefit in response rate and PFS. We are lacking randomized data, a randomized phase three, randomized phase two. And at this ESMO 2024, we had the presentation of an academically led study, Sunny Forecast, which randomized patients with non clear cell RCCs, so lumping again all together these different histologies, to receive either IO IO, nivolumab, placipilumab, versus standard of care. So, of course, it was choice of the investigator for standard of care, but the vast majority was single agent TKI. And the bottom line is that for the first time, we have a randomized study that met the primary endpoint, which was 12 months overall survival rate in favor of IOIO. To me, what this study is telling us is that there is a role for immune checkpoint inhibitor and that we indeed should offer IO based combination therapy to our patient that have those rare entities, those variant histologies. So taken all together, I think what is important when treating patients with non clear cell variant histologies is that first, we have to make sure that we have the right diagnosis and sometimes means pathological review. Second, it's a shared decision process with the patient. We have to explain that unfortunately, these diseases tend to have a dismal prognosis and therefore, we need to access to innovation, which to me is either combination therapy or access to clinical trials.